An atom. The most basic and primitive unit of the universe. Its simple elegance, its elementary wonder, its most bare of amazements. Except atoms don't exist by themselves, in our universe we have more than one atom. Which gives us an interesting problem. How do we describe the ways in which atoms interact? Well, it should be simple. We can predict pretty well what is an atom. We understand it. So if we were to try to predict how two atoms would look like, then we can just take one atom and add another. Simple stuff. Except these really nice cartoonish atoms aren't quite the real thing. And first of all, all these atoms in reality are a bit more complex. And second of all, all of those electrons inside interact together between atoms, which causes a serious problem, because we don't have the computational power to calculate even the simplest of things. So we did what we had to. We abstracted. And that's the border. The border of abstraction, which differentiates between quantum mechanics and chemistry. Which leads us to chemistry. When it comes to chemistry, we treat atoms with a simplified model, with electrons being and these unspecified beings which just happen to reside on some shells, subshells or orbitals. This gives us a lot of simplicity, so much in fact that you don't need a supercomputer to see what happens. Actually, you don't even need a good computer, or you don't need a computer at all. You can do it yourself in your very own brain. This obviously comes at a cost, because even though the complexity decreases, it also takes the accuracy with it. But that is exactly what makes a model good, because even though it takes a lot of complexity away, the accuracy may lessen only slightly. But chemistry isn't the last field we visit, because when those atoms come together, they produce reactions. Reactions which can be analyzed with chemistry. But when these reactions come together, they can create something even more complex. Something like cell organelles. And here we come to biology. Biology is different than chemistry because it deals with so many different reactions that it is pointless to analyze them in the same model. So even though all of these reactions are still chemical reactions, the model we use for them is so vastly different that from now we will call them organelles, cells, interactions, membranes, input diffusions, and practically all dynamic material things which exist in our universe. But we can still go up and up and up, up to medicine. Because when cells get together, they create tissues, which in turn create organs. Now these organs still work based on the underlying biological, chemical and quantum mechanical rules. But we don't treat them as extremely complex psi-based equations, chemical reactions or a living system. Instead, we treat them as a singular object, with a certain build, goal and place. Now when a couple of organs get together, they can form a human. And from a human, we get psychology. Now this would be probably the best example of just how different these abstract concepts are, because in psychology we can find the intelligence, which does not exist in any other field mentioned so far. Yes, in medicine we do have a brain, but in medicine we mostly talk about the activity of the brain, not so much about the intelligent person behind it. But even though psychology is not incredibly abstract, these keep on going with sociology which takes these smart individuals and groups them together to see what happens. Now from here you can keep on going to politics, law studies, war strategies, seeing how countries interact on a single planet, seeing how different planets interact in a single solar system, seeing how many solar systems interact in a galaxy, but we don't have to go up. Could go on the life path, but you could also go for the electricity, engineering and computers path. My point is, it's not really a spectrum, it's more of a cone, where the higher you go, the more abstract things get, where this point is the most basic and primitive description of the universe. And here's something which I should mention, because up to this point in the video, I was using borders to differentiate these fields. But in reality, these borders aren't as solid and rigid as I'd led you to believe. In reality, they are very fluid, that's why I do believe the cone is a better representation. Because even though technically in medicine you only consider the activity of the brain, really often intelligence and how person reacts rather than how neurons react is also taken into account. And you can't really conduct medicine without psychology, you can't really conduct sociology without psychology, you can't really conduct chemistry without quantum mechanics, and so on and so forth. So there we go, that's how you abstract. Thank you everyone so much for watching and have a great day. Bye!